Good evening. This is CTV News for Friday, September 2nd. I'm Rochelle Metzger. And I'm Karen Adams. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Maryland State Police prepare for high traffic volume this Labor Day weekend. Patricia Vallone is in Rockville with more on the story. Well, you can expect to see a lot more drivers on the roadways this holiday weekend as people head out to celebrate with friends and family. So this weekend I'm actually going to be working. I work at Suburban Hospital as a nurse. So taking no care of people, no time off. So just tell us what your plans are this weekend. I'm getting married Sunday, Labor Day weekend, right? It's a big day for you. Indeed, <laughs> indeed it is, very much so. Well, we're supposed to leave for the beach tomorrow morning, supposed to be in Rehoboth. And I don't know what we're going to do. I was just listening to the weather, and it looks like it's going to be horrible, maybe through Wednesday. So we've paid for a beach house, and, you know, I'm worried that we might get there and not make it home. Now police are warning drivers to expect tougher enforcement efforts throughout the state. Unfortunately, the weather this weekend is not looking that great. We're expecting uh, high winds and uh, various amounts of rain throughout the state. We're asking people to use good judgment uh, before they travel this weekend. Based on our prior experiences uh, throughout the state, holiday weekends, we tend to see more drivers driving impaired, unfortunately. Uh, we ask people before they go out, if they're going to be, before they go out this weekend, if they are going to be drinking, to have a plan before you start drinking. Because we know as you start drinking, your judgment starts to slip. We ask you if you're driving to be attentive to other drivers, you know, if you're driving sober, and please call and report drunken driving if you see it or you're a witness, so we can take action. Now, state police will also have its elite spider team out here in full force. The effort is intended to reduce traffic crashes by focusing on those who are impaired, aggressive, or distracted while driving. From Rockville, I'm Patricia Vallone for CTV News. And with the holiday upon us, many families are loading up their cars despite having to pay slightly more at the pump. AAA Mid-Atlantic says the average cost of gasoline in the region is about $2.20 a gallon. And at that price, it will unlikely stop people from traveling. I prefer if I'm not driving because you see I'm getting gas already, so I don't want to have to chip in any more than what I have to. But it's definitely made a big impact as well. Um, that's why I, I, I just try to search around to get the cheapest gas as possible. With the gas prices like this, you want to move uh, locally. I'm planning on going to Charleston, South Carolina. Oh, okay. You worry about the gas prices down there? No, it's probably lower. Now, the Auto Club says gas prices this time last year were about two seventeen a gallon. The verdict is in in the trial of 29-year-old Osman Cisse. He's the Riverdale man charged in the death of his girlfriend's 23-month-old son. A jury acquitted Cisse of second-degree murder, but found him guilty of first-degree child abuse resulting in death, second-degree child abuse, and second-degree assault. His mother had gone to work. Uh, you know, she was working full-time. She's in school. She was working hard to take care of her son, and she left him with Mr. Cisse uh, to be watched over while she was gone to work. Uh, he was the only person there, and then she gets to work, gets a phone call that her son's in the hospital, and she goes to Children's and finds out that he's passed away. Mr. Cisse is the only person who was with him during that time period, and it's just, you know, really a tragedy. We're very pleased that the jury did find him guilty, uh, understanding that we did have second-degree murder on the table, um, but they spent their time and they really come through to come to the verdict that they did. And we're certainly pleased by it. Prosecutors will push for the maximum 65 years in prison when Cisse is sentenced on November 9th. Well, local leaders across the region call on Metro to rethink its proposal to permanently end late night service. The 40 lawmakers, which include those from Prince George's, wrote a letter to General Manager Paul Wiedefeld asking him to seek alternatives. The proposal would close all stations at midnight Monday through Saturday and at 10 p.m. on Sunday. Wiedefeld had stressed that the plan was necessary for safety reasons. And you're watching CTV News. I'm Rochelle Metzger. And I'm Karen Adams.